Hello, this is B. I'm so happy to see you here. Uh, I have gotten a couple of questions on how I do my English paper piece quilts and I figured I'm just going to make you a video on how I do this start to finish. Um, this is my way of doing it, which by no means is the only way of doing it. It's just what works for me and for the way I work, if that makes sense. Um, please do check out other tutorials. There are so many out there on even on how to um, quilt these together or sew these together by hand. I, I don't sew my quilts on machine. I um, sew them all all by hand from start to finish. I cut them out by hand. I uh, baste them by hand. I sew them together and I quilt them by hand. It's mostly, like I said, because that works for me. There's nothing better or worse about hand quilting than machine quilting. I just like it. It's comforting to me I guess or something like that it's just it's just a nice way and it works for the way I work I can take them with me you know that kind of thing anyway let's get started so what you need is fa fabric and even little bits will work for certain uh, shapes you need a sewing needle thread sewing pins pin cushions come in very very handy I have a gazillion and three handmade pin cushions. I have them everywhere around the house in almost every purse. So I have a lot of these and needle needle books and things. Um, so these come in handy. You need um, paper and any paper will work. Um, recycled magazines, I think the if they have thicker pages, they will work. What I like to use is the mail back cards that come in those magazines, you know, for like if you want to get a subscription, those subscription cards, um, old postcards, anything of that sort of stiffness, if that makes sense. See, um, it's not flimsy fabric, uh, paper. It's this, I think, was one of those old mail back cards. So anything that's a little stiffer, if you have old holiday cards that you really don't need to keep anymore for sentimental reasons or whatever, you can use these. Just get a um, something that is um, not, you know, wishy-washy fabric. I tried the junk mail. A lot of junk mail works, but our grocery flyers are this sort of, you know, um, kind of droopy paper that does not really work for me. It might work for other people. It does not work for me. Um, so that you need, you don't need. When I first started, I cut out my templates. I, I drew them by hand and then cut them out by hand. But you need a lot of them if you want to make a whole quilt. So that got boring really, really quickly. Um, so I got myself some paper punches because that makes life much easier and they're cheaper than a circuit cutter. Um, so I have paper punches in different shapes because I, my preferred one is the hexagon because I think they look really cute and I do squares. You could use tumblers, you could use um, triangles, any shape that tessellates will work for this, okay? Because you need to, in the end, sew them together and you need to have the pieces match without having gaps in between, if that makes sense. Um, this, um, so they, I don't know, do that make sense? They need to, they need to just match up. If you have a triangle that doesn't match up, like this one, for example, this one does not, it looks like it does, but it doesn't tessellate. So if I make them in the round, in the round, it, it won't work out. It, it will work out if I just make a row. But if you wanted to make this like a star shape and go out from there, the sizing on this will just not work. So you need to um, kind of try it out. So for rows, this will work. But for the round, it does not. I don't know why. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> you need some scissors. You need some fabric scissors. And then you need to make yourself some templates. So... Obviously, we talked about these. These are for sewing, but you need some for fabric cutting. Um, I have two. I have a, you know, a cardboard one. And then I have this one that I made out of a lid from, I don't know, some food container. And this comes in handy if you have a fabric um, that has some nice print on it. And you want to make sure that, you know, you get a certain motive in the middle if you want a fussy cut, basically. So you, so you can put that in and make sure that the 
um, motive is in the middle and then um, draw around it and cut it out that way. If you have a circuit cutter, obviously, you know, you can you can cut these out a dime a dozen. And these templates need to be a little bigger. I make mine about a quarter of an inch, I think that is, something like that, a centimeter bigger than what I want my finished um, shape to be. Same with the squares. Let's see, they are just a little bigger. The templates are just a little bigger than the finished squares. And I use everything. I have papers that I that I practiced or, you know, that I did some um, swatches on. I keep all of this and then reuse it for my quilting templates because nothing gets to waste. All right, so the templates, they need to be a little bigger than your actual shape then you get your fabric and you take your template and even small little pieces work this not uh, this might just work see it it just might work it's just a little so you can put your template on your fabric front of usually i try to draw it on the back but if um obviously if you want to fussy cut something you need to mark it on the front so I put my template on here and I draw around it use a pencil or a pen that um, like a fabric marker because you don't want to use just some I don't know some ink pen or, or I don't know a Crayola marker and then when you wash your finished quilt it all bleeds out and messes up your you know your quilt so you have it drawn on here and then you cut it out. Now I know there are some some circuit cutter machines that cut fabric, which obviously makes this whole thing so much easier, but I don't have one because they are expensive. So I'm doing this by hand. There we go. And of course you could, if you have a bigger piece of fabric, you could, um, lay them on here and the way I do it is I I lay them on together like before I cut this out I put I put it on here again and I draw again and again and I make them all fit to, I don't leave a space in between because you know I cut on the line and then um, I can cut the whole fabric out and have a whole bunch of these so and I mark the whole fabric like if I had like a fat quarter I would mark the whole fabric and then start cutting them out then we have this now you take one of your templates you put it in the middle right here and one of your push pins I mean sewing pins and you stick it to the middle of the fabric like so and then we take a sewing needle I like to wax my threads this one isn't waxed yet um, I make myself these little thread waxers just from um, beeswax. I just melt it down and I have a little um, thing that I that I pour the beeswax in after it's after it's melted, and then um, they're small enough to fit in little in little tins like that and in my purses and everything because I do put together. Oh, where do I have it? Right here. I have little bags like this where I put all the necessities for this in it. So usually this pincushion is in here and I have my little um, paper templates and I have already cut fabric in here and the pincushion goes in here. And then I can put this in my purse and take it with me if I have to wait someplace um, like a bus stop or the doctor's office I can work a little and I have a bunch of little little bags like that with you know either the squares or the or the hexagons so for me for basting I really don't care if the thread matches or not because whatever it's on the back side so what you do first is you bend over this first edge all the way so that the so it's even here with the with the cardboard and then you bend over the next edge like so and you just take a little 
stitch through here like two little stitches like so come on and then you bend over the next make sure that it's flush with the cardboard at first that's a little awkward but if you do it more often you know it becomes second nature I take my sewing pin out you could leave it in all the way to the end just make sure that you don't poke yourself right there all right you go around it all the way all the way to the end here we go just little stitches like so another one here we go and then I like to push it under and come on one more stitch and then you just um, knot your thread like so and you clip it off and you have one made now I tend to make these whenever I have, I have little fabric scraps that are just big enough to put some of these on if I don't want to keep it for my um, junk journals the fabric or if it's just big enough to put some of you know whatever shape I'm, I'm working with right now I I tend to make them or cut them out and put them in one of those little bags and then when I have time I make them and I oh, let me get this out of the way so I can show you I make them and they are then right in here there is also um, this one is full of the paper templates and I have more tape paper templates down here and then these are all the pre-made ones it's pretty picked out I haven't made any in a while but here they are waiting for you know when I just want to grab a couple and sew some together and make the next quilt so here they all are and then when I have time let me pop this back up here I take two could be obviously the same color or you know if you want to make a pattern with them you depends depends on what you want to do with these you can let me make the knot hold on let me show you you could obviously let's say a red one and then so a bunch of green ones around it and make a pattern like this or you know whatever colors you want to use like so and make these little flowers and then sew them all together or you can just I like random best because you know it's fun it's colorful so I usually do just random random colors and put them all together right so when you have them all made or some made you basically take two and you pop them together like so and then make a th knot in your thread and this is how I sew them together and I know there's another lady that does it differently because she says she doesn't want the stitches to show on the front of the quilt um, I've never had a problem with my stitches showing to be honest so this is how I do it it's simple and you know mindless TV sewing <laughs> so I just go I don't know if you can see it. I just go straight across on the top I don't take much fabric just a tiny little bit see I don't know if you can see it maybe from the side see it's not a lot of fabric that I that I pick up just a little bit and then you sew all the way across like so sometimes these edges um, here this one lines up really nicely but sometimes they do not e end up matching too nice like this edge um, I didn't pay attention to what I was doing over here and it happens but it's pretty easy to just ease them in and then they will they will work so now let's see you have two sewn together and do you want I don't want I want a yellow one there maybe one, yes. so you want to sew the next one up here so again right sides together you pop this here nope 
I need to snip this first. Okay, let's finish this. You finish your stitch here and you tie it again and snip it off. All right, so now we want to sew the yellow one in this valley. So you would sew... I bend this out of my way. That way it's out of my way. And then I sew this on first across here. Oop, come on. And as I, I don't know if I said that already, but there is a way to sew them together by machine. I don't know how to do that, but there is, um, there is a way to machine sew them together. I think there's a YouTube video, so you may want to search for that. Um, again, I do mine by hand. And there's another way to sew these together. I think the lady goes in one and then into the other um, so that her stitches won't show on the front. Again, I've never had a problem with this, so this is how I do it. So I'm at the end of this line. I'm going to unfold this, grab this, and fold that one over see like that and then these two line up and I can just sew these two together and this one is a little little longer so I'm gonna ease it in a bit and you you will not really see that when you ease it in at the finished quilt I show you um, what I've done in a little bit and then let me just finish this here really quickly Mm -hmm. See, and at the end it matches now. There you go. All right. I, my budgie, is being bored. I let him out in a little bit. Right. So, and then... See, you can barely tell that this was a little longer, actually. Anyway, once you have them together, you leave the paper in for until, um, like, I would leave all the papers in until all of this is covered around this one, and then I can take this paper out. It's always easier to sew them together when the paper is still in. So what I like to do, I'm working on a um, queen-size quilt right now for my bed. So what I like to do with that is I like to sew strips. I have no idea why this is in the middle there, but I usually sew a strip like this and then I sew another strip and then I sew these two strips together. And then when I have a whole bunch of these strips made up, it looks like this. I make patches that are... Um, this big. I'm, I'm not sure how big this is. This big. A couple of rows by a couple of... I think it's nine by... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nine rows by nine hexagons, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, nine rows by nine hexagons is what I decided on, on a whim. I mean, it could be anything. Anyway, so when I have these together, then here's what it looks like. So I left the papers all around the edges. All these still have papers in it, and all the middle ones have the paper gone. This one fell out, but all the other ones still have their papers. And I reuse my papers. As you can see, they are pretty beat up um, because I reuse them until they fall apart. But So I make a couple of these, and then I sew these together into bigger bits. So these would be two of them sewn together. And then... When I have four of these sewn together, and this is for my queen size quilt. My baby quilts have a center in the middle, so they are um, done a little bit differently. I make basically the frame out of my hexagons and then sew the the backing behind that. But like I said, this is for my queen size quilt, how I do this. I make four of these nine by by nine squares and sew the four squares together. And then I make the quilt sandwich, which means, let me show you. 
Okay, my quilt sandwich consists of the front with the um, little hexagon. Oh, this fell out. With the hexagons, with the paper still in the edges. This one lost its paper, but so the the see it's that easy. The paper is just falling out. And this is the this is the paper that I told you about. I would not use again. That's the um, grocery store. See how this is just crappy paper. It's not good for this, and they fall out much easier than the little stiffer paper. Anyway, I grab my quilt top and then the batting. I use um, flannel for my batting. These are old baby blankets that a friend of mine got. Another friend of hers has a um, baby thrift store and some of these they can't resell because they have little um, spots that don't come out. So she brought me a whole bunch and I just, I just cut the stains out and then use the rest. Um, so flannel or for my daughter's quilt, I bought flannel at, um, I think Joanne's. I like to use flannel instead of batting because I don't like the really fat quilts because they get too warm at night or my husband gets really warm at night. So we like this better. It's lighter. It's not as warm. It's, you know, so I use flannel, but you could use batting. So you have your top, you have your batting, and then you have your backing. You lay it all flat together. You make sure you, you I iron my, my quilt top. I iron my batting. Um, obviously, if you have fiber filled batting, you wouldn't iron it. But I iron my batting and I iron my backing. I lay it all flat together. I make sure that it's all laid out flat, that there's no folds or anything. And then I safety pin baste it all together. Um, really well because you don't want any of this moving around while you quilt. And then I start quilting. Let me show you. From the center out, I basically just go around every one of those little hexagons with a running stitch and quilt it all down. I remove the safety pins as I go. And that's that. Make sure that there's no paper underneath. Paper, again, is only in the edges so that they stay like stiff. And I leave that in um, until I'm ready to quilt the two bigger panels together. I will um, quilt all these from the center out, all except this and this row. Let me show. Let me do it like, differently. All except these two at the edges. I will leave these unquilted until I'm ready to join the next panel on and then um, this gets cut off and the next panel would basically um, slot in here like so. And the next panel would also be finished quilting all the way except the corner pieces. Then I take the, the paper out as I sew them together. I would sew the top together and then um, cut the bottom so that they match up and I just fold over the edges, um, you know, of the... I, I, will, I will cut the batting even and I will just fold over the edges of this just a little, you know, to obviously shorten it a little and then fold it over and sew the other one with a blind stitch to this one and they will all have different um, backing fabrics. There you go, because, you know, I thought this should be a fun quilt, so I didn't want to have just one giant one. Um, also because of the way I quilted. I didn't want one giant one, that way I can quilt it in instances. So, that's that. This is how I do it. I don't have a problem. A few of my stitches show because I didn't match the thread because, you know, life's too short to match your thread. Um, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I did all this work. Why shouldn't it show? So there you go. If you match your thread, you won't see the stitches. Or like I said, you can do like this other lady. I forget her name and I cannot remember where I saw it. I may have either found it on Pinterest or on YouTube accidentally. Um, She's out there. No, I think it was a blog post. Anyway, look around. I'm sure you'll find her too. She does it a little differently. Like I said, I'm not bothered by my stitches showing. I did all this work. Why shouldn't you see it?
right? Anyway, this is how this works. This is how I do it. This is basically how it works with any of the other um, patterns too. If you use a square instead of um, the the rectangle, uh, the hexagon, you'd put no. Oh, come on, you put your square on the square. Oops. You put your square right here, like so. And depending on the size of, oh, I put it to the wrong side. Depending on the size of your template, of your paper template, um, here I probably would take a stitch here and um, you can go th with a stitch through the paper and um, tack it down that way. So that if, if this is too long, you may have to go with a stitch through the paper and then you have to take your tacking stitches out, obviously, so you can get the paper out. For me, I leave my tacking stitches in on the little ones because I can, you know, the paper go comes easily. Where did the little ones go that I had? Don't know. Um, because the paper comes very easily. Let me just show you. The paper comes very easily out. You just pinch it a little see and it comes out really easy um, you could use a pin or maybe a crochet hook or something there are also plastic reusable templates available I think I've seen them on Etsy I have never used them so I don't know how they work but they are available I use this because that's what I have around the house um, and it works and you know there we have it and I can have as many of these as I want so I can have 10 of these projects going on and I don't have to worry where my my templates are and um, how many more templates I have to invest in because I just um, paper punch a couple more but definitely the if you don't want to make huge quilts um, or you know don't want to have seven projects going at the same time then maybe those reusable um plastic templates would work for you look it up have a look try it out i don't know anyway have fun doing this show me what you make i oh i also have a crochet project coming out a new crochet pattern coming out over on post it's gonna be a free pattern i made myself a little garlic basket um well it's hanging up over there right now so i don't have it here where's the other one Oh, here. This was the prototype. I made the, the pattern a little taller, but this is the prototype. So I have that pattern coming out over on post. I'm Sidewalk Pirate on post. Check it out. It's going to be a free pattern. It's being tested right now, probably mid-February-ish is when this is coming out. Okay, so there you go. Little freebie at the end of this. Anyway, if you crochet. Anyway, there you have it. I hope that helps. I hope you try it out. It's really, really a lot of fun. Um, you can make a lot of things with it. You can make um, pillows or you can make um, quilts. You can make tea cozies. Oh, let me show you the pillow. Hold on. I, I've made a... Hold on. See, here's the pillow I made. It's little clamshells all made by hand. I didn't have a um, paper punch for this, so I had to cut them all out by hand. Um, but isn't it cute? It's just a little pillow. I gave it a zipper on the bottom and this is the backing and this just sits on my chair and I really really like it and like I said you probably could have made a pattern with this too like blue red whatever I I like this because it's fun and colorful and it makes me smile and there you have it anyway again you can do a whole lot of different things with this because out of tiny little fabric scraps that would maybe usually just, you know, go someplace. I don't know. Nothing gets thrown away in my house. So I don't really know what would somebody would do if, if somebody even would throw this away. But, you know, anyway, tiny little paper, uh, fabric scraps and paper scraps that don't really have a lot of purpose or a lot of uses can be made into a bigger fabric and then, you know being made into useful items. I hope you have fun. Anyway, see you later. Bye.